Okay. I think we're live. Hey, Kayoko. Hi. 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 Thanks for today. I'm just going to make sure that we're live. Let's one sec. Sometimes there's just a short delay. Um, okay. And I have to make sure it's working. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's see. Um, actually, yeah, it's still counting down. So. There we go. Yeah. Okay, it's working. Great. Well, thanks so much for joining me. Um, Keoko, so we're going to talk about your work today. And uh, before we start, I thought maybe I could leave a short uh, centering practice. It always helps me <laughs> before we start these conversations to get centered. Uh, okay, so maybe I could uh, ask you, uh, you and everyone who's joining us uh, just to take a moment. And you can have the eyes open or closed. It's up to you. And become aware of the body. Let's see if you can inhale and feel some length and lifting in the body with the inhalation. And then on the exhalation, really feel that uh, gravity is connecting us down, connecting us with the earth, with your seat, or connecting your feet to the floor. And on a few more breaths, feel that inhalation lifting you and the exhalation grounding you back down. And then take another deep inhalation and a slow exhalation, slowly coming back, opening the eyes when you're ready. So thanks again for joining me. Um, so I know we met, um, we've met a couple of times over the years and I've always admired your work and I love what you've created, the, the organization you've created, Yoga Gives Back. Um, I wonder if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself and um, about the organization to get started. Yes, thank you so much, Ivana, and Accessible, Accessible Yoga for having me today. Um, I'm a documentary filmmaker uh, by profession. Mm. So um, I went to uh, filmmaking uh, when I graduated from college in Japan, and uh, I've lived in many other countries, and I just wanted to always uh, share the voice of the voiceless as a mm. filmmaker. So I um, did that for so many years, almost 30 years. Wow. But during that time, um, in 2006, um, I started practicing yoga. And then at the same time, I was doing a documentary about social entrepreneurship. That was a very hot topic around that time, about 13, 14 years ago. And Dr. Mohammed Yunus just received Nobel Peace Prize for his uh, revolutionary microfinancing. So I was doing this documentary, opening my eyes of what $15 can do to a poorest woman in, in a developing countries and you know, change their lives as a microfinancing. Then come back to Los Angeles and started a great yoga practice, paying about $15 a class and feeling so happy uh, physically and especially mentally. Um, I was really feeling so blessed each time. Then one day, and then there were a lot of uh, yoga charity classes in like 13 years ago. There were classes for HIV, uh, classes for animal rights, breast cancer, so on. But one day it hit me so hard that there was nothing that was focusing on the poverty and the social injustice that comes from poverty issues in India, where mm. yoga is from. And so I, was, I started to feel like we're taking everything from the tradition of yoga to benefit. Mm. You know, ourselves enrich ourselves, but nothing is going back there. So I thought, I thought maybe we should do something to do like charity class for India. And I talked to my teacher, who loved the idea. And long story short, um, in 13 years, this is our 13th year. Wow. We now reached out to over 20 countries, and uh, really was of mouth. You know, that's how it spread. But I think a lot of people who practice yoga, like Shivana yourself. Anybody who know how beneficial yoga is in their lives, 
wanted to give back to India because a lot of people know about the poverty issues and especially uh, gender discrimination and the children's um, deprivation of their rights and so on. So I guess in a sense, like I created an organization that was like a lot of people. So that's how Yoga Gives Back has grown to be. Uh, it's a very still small grassroots, but the global kind of movement of giving back. And so today we fund almost 1,400 underserved women and children in India, working wow. very closely with our three NGO partners. We developed a partnership over the years. And so over almost 500 women, we give microloans. And mm -hmm. for the rest, we gave a scholarship for higher education for many uh, teen, teenage disadvantaged teen, uh, mainly girls, but some boys as well. And some are, and some are, uh, girls who are rescued from um, areas who are at risk for prostitution and so on. So uh, that's how we are growing, and uh, mm -hmm. I'm very grateful for all the yoga communities in the world who are supporting our campaign. Can you? That's amazing. Can you talk a little more about um, microloans and the, mm -hmm. the idea behind how that works? Um, and yes. I know it's not like it's not like a one-time loan, right? You have a commitment mm -hmm. uh, to these women for is it five years? Yes, five years. For each person, uh, everybody that we support of nearly 1,400, we don't want to just give one-time donation leave. This is like a sustainable, from the beginning, I wanted to make sure that this is a sustainable um, movement, organization. So um, we give some law, small laws through our um, NGO partner, Nishta, in West Bengal. Mm. We administer, they find uh, who will be eligible for this program because a lot of women we support are illiterate. They've never come out of their houses even, you know, once they get married. It's a very traditional conservative rural village um, they live. So um, they, they find these women and they group make a small group. This is actually Dr. Mohammed Yunus's uh, uh, kind of platform he created. It's a very ingenious way of becoming creating a small group of five to ten women so that they become re responsible for each other if they have to somebody with default payments other members become responsible in this way the, as a group they continue to grow so we give a very small micro loan um to maybe 100 or 200 dollars a year to begin with um to a small group and uh, they learn uh and geo partner train these ladies but they learn how to um set up a bank account. They've never, most of them have never even been to banks in their lives. You know, so they learn how to open their bank account, how to save, that, that's what, instead of interest, we encourage them to save. Actually, it's a requirement, at least mm. 50 rupees per month for their daughter's education. Um, and then they start, um, it takes two to three years to really establish their business, but they start very small businesses like making a clay clay jewelry <laughs> or like a newspaper um, grocery bags or rolling um, incense or making a very popular and very uh, lucrative so far profitable business has been uh, making mats uh, with raw uh, straws straw straw mats. yes mm. um, well I have to tell you the sad story of this this year's um, natural disaster that has really destroyed these businesses. But so far, uh, we have seen so much growth and um, especially not just financially, but uh, mentally, women become so empowered by uh, being able to earn their own money. And this group also, microloan groups become, have become their um, like a mutual peer group where they can talk about their domestic violence issues and so on that they've never been able to share in the past. So they have become such a great um, support mutual support group that the, mm. if husband one husband uh, abuses wife a member of the group the whole group goes to the house and tell them not to do this and they bring mm. in the local government and they've learned how to stand up, stand for their own rights wow. so it's been empowering to see that that's beautiful and and then do they sell the products themselves there? I mean, is it are you are you are you helping them with that piece? Like, is it just the loan, or is there additional support that they're getting in terms of business? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, no, we 
we don't know what to do with them. So they, we completely um, assist their plans. Uh, that's uh -huh. why uh, I wanted to always make sure that they decide everything. And actually, our NGO partner, who knows um, their culture, this rural, you know, impoverished communities culture, they know, but they let the women decide everything. And we assist um, funding and support so they sell items um in their local markets in the village mainly. Mm -hmm. and and do you have um examples of of how this has affected people's lives i mean have you you go i imagine you go to india right and you meet mm -hmm. women and what have yeah. you seen like how have you seen them their lives change yes so actually the very first uh, family we supported was in bangalore um, and uh, Jayashri is a woman who received microloan. And when I first met the family, they lived in outside of uh, Bangalore in a very small shack. And uh, she has two daughter, two sons. And she, her dream was to be able to give good education for her sons because she only went to like seventh grade and had to work. Um, long story short, this elder son that we started uh, funding um, not only just the mother's microloan, but uh, education funds. Uh, he is now become um, emergency doctor, helping mm. COVID-19 patients in Bangalore in a big hospital. Wow. Uh, so that's that's one incredible story we followed for the last uh, almost like since 2010, so 13 years almost. Wow. Uh, so, most of the rural villages uh, stories in the rural villages in uh, in West Bengal, uh, as I said, I think the fact that these women have become like peer group and support not just financially but mentally, and really standing or learn how to stand on for their own rights and stand against domestic abuse and uh, like child marriage that families pressuring on their daughters things like that has been yeah. uh, much more like empowering <laughs> that's amazing um and i know you mentioned the flooding i know that have you uh, been in touch with people there because i don't think yeah. the rest of the world is really talking about that you know we're so we're so absorbed with our problems here with in the in the u.s at least with covid and yeah um you know, at least there's some awareness of race, of like this racial uprising happening in the U.S. But I feel like there's such such little, t like hardly any coverage or news around the world. And what's happening? Yeah. I know that what's in India, the flooding has been terrible. Yes, and that have unfortunately this is a cyclone Amfa of historical, you know, like catastrophic and historic size has hit yeah. them in West Bengal on May twentieth in the middle of pandemic uh, lockdown. Lockdown yeah. has been going on like two months by then. It's still going on in West Bengal, by the way, and most of India. India is uh, number is increasing fast. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, uh, by May twentieth, when cyclone hit, they've already exhausted most of their savings because they have not been able to make any money for the last two or three months. Which somehow this pandemic makes us like easier to imagine that because we are also going through the similar situation. So a lot of people can identify or you know empathize the situation. But this cyclone was so huge that 80% of the homes were destroyed. So mm -hmm. unfortunately, most of the women and girls and children we've been supporting, they've lost their uh, houses. Um, oh. And uh, our NGO partner has been there ever since the next morning. And I was so worried every day, but uh, there was only a telephone at first, WhatsApp, you know, and we were able to get some images in a few days. But first first text I got was like, Kayoko, we lost hope. And that mm. was, I've never heard that from them because they were always full of hope and full of energy. Of course, the first few days was very difficult. And it's been over almost two months now. They still don't have enough food or drinking water. So um, in our 13th year, and we've been growing so well with the uh, programs, this this is like a huge learning curve for us. We didn't know what to do first, but yeah. very soon we realized we have to give them relief, 
urgent relief first because if they, if they don't have food or water, you know, they can't do anything, right? Um, yeah. So Michael Lawrence and education um, scholarship, uh, of course, will do it. But right now, we're trying to make sure that they have, they have housing and uh, water and uh, food. And uh, luckily, uh, our NGO partner is so strong, and they've been working in the region for like the last 40 years. So uh, they've come up. This is this is another very interesting lesson that I learned. Like, so a lot of families have lost money, so they, they want their daughters to get married now instead of send high school, college with a scholarship. So in order to avoid this kind of uh, dropout to happen, our NGO is giving the families of our scholarship students, girls, um, extra food. So the mm. government is giving them rice and wheat, but our program will give the, the families extra oil and biscuits or like something extra. And they t our NGO partner is telling the parents, like, as long as your daughter stays with Yoga Gives Back's she scholarship program for higher education, uh -huh. you can continue to receive this food. Uh -huh. so, I, I am like, isn't it interesting? <laughs> you know, yeah. these are the kind of things you can't think from here. You have to be on the ground, you have to know the culture. So yeah. I'm like, yes, please do this. And so I'm communicating and trying to facilitate and assist as much as possible, funding wise and uh, moral support. And also, like, like Zoom is very important. I'm doing this tomorrow yeah. morning too with an uh, NGO partner in India. If anybody's interested, um, let me know, um, just message me. Uh, you can join our Zoom call because I think that's very important to hear from their voice what's going on. Yeah. And then how do you raise money? I know you have a One Million Yogis project. I mean, is that, can you talk about what that is? Is that, yeah. I mean, do you get most of your money from individual donations or do you have um, sponsors? Yes. So most of the majority of the funding comes from um, yoga events, yoga fundraisers, or, you know, fund fundraising right. events, classes. Like this morning, I did online class from Canadian yoga class. That was a Zoom class. Mm -hmm. Teacher was in India. And there were about 80 people from all over the world. Everybody was giving like $10. And we raised wow. like $100. That's how, that's the goal. That's actually the, the best um, business model for us. Uh, if 1 million yogis, there are supposed to be 300 million yogis in the world mm. uh, appreciating, you know, including your community, um, appreciating this tradition. So yeah. if anybody gives $5 even, that's five, mm -hmm. $5 million we don't have. <laughs> and we can help <laughs> so many people, right? So that's yeah. that's one big uh, mission, one million yogis campaign. But yeah. uh, so our goal is to raise enough money to do much more uh, and the money should come from yoga practitioners that's my goal but uh, at the moment we mm -hmm. have to spend half of the money from sponsors um mm -hmm. we do fundraiser big gala fundraiser every year and uh, people donate with um, auction and so on so we're doing as much as we can but our goal is one million yogis giving cool. five dollars you must be close to that already though i think you've done so well i hope uh, so, but it's it's, a lot, it's still you know every year like we're yeah, no, I was at your, your annual fundraiser this year um, in LA. That was my first year attending. It was a really great event. And I think you raised a lot of money. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's great to see the, it's great to see yoga practitioners focus on service, first of all, which is at the heart of the practice. That's what I'm always teaching, that service is the heart of the way we bring yoga into our lives. And, you know, directly serving India in a way that's um, thoughtful and culturally appropriate because I think that one of the challenges like I think sometimes we want to just send money but we don't have the kind of we haven't done the the work you've done on the ground and that's what I always appreciate about you you and your organization and the concept again of micro loans mm -hmm. you know I think that's um I think it's brilliant that you've gone that way rather than just giving money to maybe to directly to these larger organizations too you're going directly to the people yeah uh, the women um, who need who need that support? So I mean, that's I think it's very um, it's quite ingenious. Um, can you tell us more about micro loans though? Because you didn't really explain. I just want to know like the background. I mean, what is his name? That that the, the um, Nobel yeah. yeah, Dr. Mohammed Yunus. 
white yes. NUS. He received a Nobel Peace Prize right. in 2006 uh, because he he was a professor of economics, you know, um, in Bangladesh. And uh, then there was a huge famine in the 70s, and he realized his theory, economic theory, is not helping any of this famine situation. Mm. So he gave like forty dollars out of his pocket to the poorest people in his village. Uh -huh. who are taken advantage always by the middleman. You know, when you're born to a poor, this poorest um, ladder, poor, poorest level of the society, you're always always been exploited by somebody in the middle. So he gave the money, $40, and these women bought their bamboos and they made their own bamboo stools and they went to the market. Instead of depending on the middleman, they went straight to the market, sold everything. So 100% of the profit became their own. That's how it started. And um, he actually, I met Dr. Yunus quite a few times because of this work too. Uh, oh. He explained that he didn't want to make this as a like a women's empowerment program. He was just giving the chance to the poorest people a chance. Uh -huh. But he did it 10 years and he realized somehow women pay back this loan, whatever they got, they pay back like 99%. Whereas wow. men, I'm sorry, but men <laughs> somehow spend the money for like drinking or gambling and it doesn't even go to like children or family. So that's how, that's how it became a women's empowerment tool. Uh -huh. And uh, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. And that's how, and I learned so much about this. Uh, I wanted to do this. Um, and also like, so yoga, yoga community, when I started thinking about it, we, we were paying like 10 to $15 13 years ago. Today we pay like 20 to $40 a class. And we were paying $60 yoga pants, now $100, right? Yeah. So if you can afford that, and if you're getting benefit out of that practice, um, instead of just taking everything to yourself, why don't we give some just one class uh, back to the pot of Michael, mm. and then we can help, help so many people. So, um, yeah. one pitch is you don't have to be Bill Gates. Yeah. If, you, if you have access to yoga, that's all you need. Yeah. And how how do people get involved? What could they do? Like, if someone wanted, if a yoga teacher wanted to teach a class for you, do they become an ambassador first? Is that what? Yeah. Uh, as long as uh, somebody can uh, host one class a year. That's all, all we need as a criteria to become an ambassador. And ambassadors are the really are the power source uh, for our organization's growth. And uh, their passion uh, really reaches to their communities that we cannot reach out by ourselves. So uh -huh. they become our voice, yes. And they just have to commit to teaching one class a year and giving them yeah. the, the money to Yoga Gives Back. Exactly. And, and how much of the money gets to India? Like, is there overhead? Do you have a lot of overhead or do you? Uh, well, we try to mini, mini, uh, limit our overhead or administration costs to maximum 20% so that 80% goes to India. Wow. I am the, uh, I was a, a volunteer for the first eight years and I was still doing the documentary making. Uh -huh. This was my hobby, but in the eighth year, finally, I realized I cannot do both. I have to commit myself it just got too big so i quit my job and this became my job and i'm the only employee um, really? yeah wow. and uh, we are still struggling we, we don't you know it's not like uh i i i have zero zero um regret but um uh -huh. it's not like working for television you know like it's okay yeah. but um uh yeah that's how it is yeah. You know how you're running the nonprofit organization. Yeah, I know, so. how, I know how it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, and what about your docu documentary filmmaking? Did you do uh, films about some of the women that receive your micro loans? I mean, have you used yeah. that skill? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So it has become very um, handy that I have that as a profession. So ever, ever since the first year, I've been carrying the camera by myself. I don't have a budget now to have a crew with me. So I just go there and meet people and film at the same time, come back uh -huh. and uh, I have uh, friends editing it or sometimes, right now I'm just, I edit a lot of short little stories by myself, uh, saving money, but also I realize this social media is like, you have to keep going, right? And sharing mm -hmm. messages. And yeah. um, 
So I, I'm trying to use the social media platform to, to yeah. disseminate what's going on in India and also how easy it is to give back with Yoga Gives Back. Right. <laughs> yeah, and I think there's some films on short films on your website. Is that right? Oh yes, yeah. YGB films. I've done like more than dozens, many many uh, programs uh, films are there, are th three to five minutes, and you can really see how your donation truly change lives. Hmm. Okay, and I can put the link in the um, Facebook chat later. Um, yeah, thank you. Can look for that. Yeah, and also to, for the that also on the website is where they would sign up to become an ambassador. Is that right? Yes. Um, or um, you can just uh, put info at yoga gives back. That's the general mm -hmm. inbox. Yeah. Uh, which we check every day. And, yeah, and I, I welcome everybody to join us. I'm curious what um, what you've learned about yoga through this. I mean, has it changed your perception of the practice of like what yoga is to you? Yeah, uh, it's so profound because literally it changed my life. You know, I really changed my profession. I never knew I was going to leave this organization. Uh, it was my plan. Uh, I think that like yoga, yoga. Everybody says it's it's yoga connects, yoga unites, and uh -huh. in many levels, it truly connects me to first Indian people that I've never met in my life. Uh, now I have 1,400 sisters and brothers mm. who are in my heart every day. And mm. then on top of that, I meet people like you, people like ambassadors from all over the world who come to our organization, not with a, like a self-centered interest, but only because they want to serve, like you said because they want to give back. So it, it um, attracts some wonderful group of people. And uh, many of them I've never met in my life, but if I meet them, I feel like immediate connection. And I, I just think that's that's one of the, the best thing I've ever uh, experienced in my life. Mm. So that, that's yoga to me. And it's just it just keeps growing. Mm. Yeah, I think that's yoga. I think you're saying it beautifully that it's connecting, but not always just, uh, I think sometimes yoga is taught like it's just this inner connection, but there's this other piece of it, this um, connecting with other people through service or creating community mm -hmm. um, by em empowering other people. Mm -hmm. That feels to me like really what yoga is about. And it's hard to sometimes put words to that, you know, in especially here in the West where yoga is seen as something so different, you know, it's such a physical practice. Yeah. Um, but I really feel like that's the truth of what we're doing is this community building uh, and creating connections among people um, through service, you know, and service isn't so service isn't always, um, I mean, what you're doing is beautiful service, like actually giving money mm -hmm. and giving work. Um, but service can be anytime we, reach out out of love and kindness to connect with other people. That's a kind of service. Yes. Um, so I guess all of your ambassadors, they're doing service by offering yoga and sending the money to you. Uh, that seems like an opportunity for service as well. Mm -hmm. So I know you've touched so many people, so I just I just want to thank you um, for all your work. I don't know if there's anything else you want to share with us. Do you have any other things that we should know about um, about your work or the, the communities that you're serving? Um, I think I've, I've spoken enough, but uh, I, I appreciate this kind of opportunity to reach out to your community, to share yeah. our mission, and if anybody's interested, just let me know, and uh, that's how we keep growing. Yeah, great. Okay, so I'll put a link and um, to the website, and hopefully people will follow up and learn more about uh, Yoga Gives Back, and thank you so much for being here with me thank today you. and talking to me. Okay, take care of yourself. Thank you so much. Namaste. Okay. Bye-bye.